with, with that ethos in mind, yeah. where, where does that place you in in a musical community, in, in the, the, the New Zealand context? Is it hard for you to engage with the mainstream of what's happening? Do you care? One always cares. Be pretty silly to say if you didn't. You know, I think that's true. But this whole idea of mainstream is a bit of a interesting one, isn't it? A bit like the audience. Oh, yeah. You know, there are a whole lot of individuals, and they're all very different. And I mean, I think uh, it's sort of stopped now. But for three or four years, four, four years or so, John Coulter in Auckland. Well, he got the job from Brisbane. He's an ex-student of mine. And they were building multi-channel studios at Auckland. So he took me on board because I already built one and also to teach as postgraduates and for and go to symposia and stuff like that. And there, there were international symposia and ACMCs and things like that. And they were really, really, really enjoyable. I learned an enormous amount about translating stuff made in the studio to a huge space and the compromises that are necessary, et cetera, et cetera, taught me an enormous amount. Um, uh, and I I think I got on with people okay and um, enjoyed what they were doing and we could swap. I didn't feel like I was a pariah of some sort, you know. Uh, but in the end, I think... I can't get a handle on how to promulgate this work in any broader sense without compromising it to such an extent that it's uh, destroyed me. I remember having, I've had a number of conversations with Jack Body about that. He got really, really pissed off with me sitting here, you know, and he would say it, you know, you sit there in your little hole, you know, making this stuff for this instrument and, 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 and how the hell are you ever going to promulgate it? Anyway, not long before he died, I said, okay, Jack, um, you write an orchestral piece, right? And it gets one performance if you're lucky, probably not very good because it's not enough rehearsal time. And if you're really lucky, somebody's going to record it, it'll be put on CD, I don't know how many of those CDs get sold. Sweet fuck all, probably. And when they are, you've got absolutely no control over how they're listened to. If they're listened to ever more than once, they're probably stuck on a shelf and never looked at again. I said, um, probably, when the chips are down, more people have heard my work than have heard that orchestral piece. Not only that, they've heard it in the optimum environment in my presence. It's a human interaction. It's a real connection between someone and me via the work. It's enriching for us both and they leave the place having had an experience that they'll remember for a long time. And I said, so I don't think really I'm any worse off than you are. <laughs> Now, you know, maybe that's overstated a bit, but I'm not so sure, you know. I mean, uh, so, so, so th this, this connection uh, is, is problematic, and I find myself archiving material now, you know, and, and, and putting in, making videos for some individual, obviously after I'm dead, telling them what they must do and must do, and so forth and so on which is ridiculous, really. Another half of me thinks, for Christ's sake, forget it. It doesn't matter. You know, in 150 years, nobody will know anything about anybody. You know, what, what really matters is having fun. You know, and enjoying the fact that I can still work. And, 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 uh, play the work to, even if I play it to one other person, it's done its job as far as I'm concerned, you know. And very quickly you can get 
you know, if you get too much of a sense of your role in things, I think it become it becomes counterproductive in all sorts of ways. But there's always the egotistical thing there, you know. Oh well, you know, so and so's been given this money and that money and he's a laureate and he's an icon and he's this and that. Well, what about me? You know. But actually it's a it's a trip to nowhere that in the end. It's a, it's a human failing that we all have. But it it doesn't do to pursue it, I don't think. I don't know whether that answers your question or not, but roundabout. I don't know really what my question was driving at anyway. But I'm, well, I'm, you're talking about the mainstream, really. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah. I, I see you as a, a, an outlier, really, in a way. Everyone knows who John Cousins is. I know. Well, I don't. And, and there's a, a huge amount of respect and admiration. And But who is he? Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, it's, exactly. Because he's, he's not in our community no. in a, in a I know. very visible way. I know. But you look on my website. Yeah, yeah. Every sure. single page has got an invitation on it. Yeah. An invitation. You go to the invitation. Yep. There it is. Here's a phone number. Here's an email. Yep. Sure. You come and listen. Yeah. Now, of course, nobody has ever, ever, ever responded, I don't think, <laughs> to that. Now, other people come. But, you know, and they probably never will. But it's absolutely genuine, yeah. you know. And as I say, it's a, and every now and then, last year there was an attempt by a physics room, which is an art space here in Christchurch. They decided that they were going to try and do something about promulgating the work. And so they facilitated visits to the studio. I gave an artist talk in their space and that they had a workstation with background material and then people could book a time to come over a period of a month. And there were, you know, a number of slots, about 10 hours per week when I was available and the studio was available, people could come and listen one at a time. Or if there two people came, one of them could go next door and look and read and stuff and so forth, ancillary material, and then they, they could come across. And they, they did everything they could, you know, and I, I think there was about four people eventually turned up. Some people booked and never turned up. It was free, didn't cost anything. But it was a disaster as far as trying to get more people into the place. I've made three applications now to the Christchurch Art Gallery, asking them to make me their audio outreach. I mean, for me, it's a no-brainer. You know, I said, just you be the administrators. You know, I'll come and give some talks and so forth, and then then you can just just facilitate people's visits, and they can just come. And, I'll, and we'll have a certain, you know, seasons or you know, a week on, week off or whatever. We can organise that. Won't cost you a bean. They've sent exhibitions offices here and they've gone away raving. You'll hear from them again. And maybe there's all sorts of health and safety things involved. I don't know. And I think there is something there too, you know. I mean, some of these people that came in the physics room a project, you know, were women. They go out to the suburbs to this corrugated iron shed, and there's somebody that they never met before. They have to go in there and sit in this dark space, trapped really. The only way they can get out is if they call out and I stop things and I escort them. You know, it, I think there's an element there that could put people off once they're here. There's absolutely no problem at all. But getting people here. But then I, you know, somebody said to me, well, what would happen if suddenly you're inundated with people? Of course, it would be a disaster. Because it wouldn't matter work. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, but I mean, you know, I recently spent some time in Argentina and city of Córdoba, at the National University, Argentinian National University, a six-channel system in a very reverberant, uncomfortable hall, um, a composer's talk and evening concert and then some postgraduate teaching in the next couple of days. And the place was just crammed full of people, hundreds of people, mostly students, other people too. The composer's talk went on for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours with a translator. They were just 
absolutely so passionate and committed. Uh, it was a, a really the most extraordinary experience, and the work only just managed to survive its environment and being conflated in that way. But it's, because of its narrative content, I think, there was still a thread that people could hold on to. And there were some images in some of the pieces. Um, and, you know, every now and then, once or twice, every couple of years, I'll, I'll, I'll piss off somewhere and do that sort of thing. And it's very invigorating. And that's all I really need to keep me going, you know. <laughs> I don't need that, really. But um, it's good when it happens and, and fun and interesting. So there's a whole, and people come through, uh, recently a guy came through um, performing with Phil Dadson, a Chilean composer, and Phil said, oh, you should, if you're in Christ, you should go and see John. So he came, and we listened, and he went away for a few days to do something, came back, and we listened some more, and we just clicked. It was in his 50s, really interesting, wonderful, interesting, intelligent, uh, eloquent man and so on the way back from Argentina we stopped in Chile for a week we went and stayed at his house on the coast and had the most intensely enjoyable six days with this guy you know that I'd only met for a few hours previously and it was a, you know an experience I'll, I'll treasure forever and that's because of this place actually so there are all sorts of riches <laughs> that that I that I receive, but they've got nothing to do with the so-called mainstream or uh, you know those important things. Um, and I think I've got to the stage where I realise this that that's not going to happen, and it doesn't really matter if it doesn't. Um, there's always the contrary thing, you know. I think about this disc full of works, over 50 spatialized works. And, and I, when I'm archiving them, I go and listen to them and I think, Jesus, especially the ones made over the last 10 years, I just really did the best I could every time. There's a very few occasions when I think, oh, I think now I could have done it better, but at the time, I haven't cut any corners. I've really, really, really attempted to do the best I could, and and I think that's reflected in the in the in the work, actually. Um, so there's there's the pros and the cons, and this is a real bastard, really, isn't it? Because mm, it's a problem, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm. It is, mind you. I suppose any recording, even a recording of a, an acoustic orchestral concert, is you know it's still a compromise. Not the same as being there, you know. I think um, some, some I can't remember who said it, but they said something that um, taking a film of a sound installation is like chipping off bits of paint of a painting, and then putting it in a box and saying, "Here's the painting." <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> I think that's right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and actually, if you think about other contexts of things, you know, it's a bit like you know, going on a holiday, showing people your you know, holiday shots, you know. <laughs> I mean, it can be fun, but it's got nothing to do with the actual experience of being there, yeah. you know. Especially if you go to a really exotic place. Mm. Really, you need to go there. And that's actually my attitude towards this. You know, I mean, if you want to go to a, get a good right-hand break somewhere, you've got to go to where it is. You know, I've got my favourite spots on the peninsula. I know where they are. And if I want to wave ski, I've got to go there. You know, <laughs> get in the car and go. And it's the same here. If someone wants to hear the work, they have to come to the instrument. So if you want to, want to experience, you know, Wagner, really experience them, go to Bayreuth, you know. So how do you feel about people gathering in a, a concert hall with two speakers set up and, and listening? I just think it's a joke. Mm. I think the whole promulgating pro promulgation problem with this media, and I'm talking about stereo too, 
is and you know and people try and get around it live diffusion and doubling up the speaker count and all the rest of it I I think but the works be made usually in a small room with the composer in the sweet spot and they make all their decisions there reverberation filtering fill based on the instrument that they're sitting in and as soon as you take it out of that then it's like writing a symphony orchestra piece and then having it played by a string quartet I mean it's just it can be done but it, it's it's so much of a compromise and, and yet and that's with the whole problem I think Another big problem, there's the noise problem and the hierarchy difficulty that I discussed earlier. There's also the whole habit of listening. You know, the whole idea that we're going to have a concert, you know, so you have a concert hall and you put people in it and you play them the work, you know. And, you know, everybody's been to a concert where there's been, you know, some ac acoustic music played by instruments and then there's been an acousmatic. Yeah, electronic music piece. <laughs> you feel as though, you know, somebody's sort of taking your pants down or something. It's just, it's, oh, Christ. You know, oh, yeah, right. Oh, that's right. That's right. We're supposed to. That's right. You know, because you want to look. You want to see something. You know, it's just weird. It's weird as hell. Quite apart from the fact that you're probably in the wrong place. And the whole thing is, it's just a disaster. It's much more likely to achieve success in somebody's lounge with a home theatre system sitting listening by themselves or with a small group of people to get it in a domestic situation I see it far more like that rather than as a big social event I certainly don't see this working even in the, at the KMC uh, hall in, in Auckland when I was doing this work with John Coulter you know we pl played back some of these that were mostly eight channel works then into this huge space with duplicated things and so forth to nine people you know and and we got it as best as we could but it was it became cumbersome it became all the clarity was gone all the small gradations of distance and intimacy I mean how do you how do you get those near phones Especially if the near phones are oscillating so quickly that you don't hear any oscillation. There's like that. And they're just giving a slight frisson to the main program, which is in the front pair. You don't even hear them. But boy, you know when they're not there. I mean, you can't do it. 